Hey guys, so the Cold War ended about 30 years ago, but its after effects are still being felt today. The two superpowers, the USA and USSR in their competition, created many ambitious projects. One of them was called Iceworm, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So our planet's largest island has worried the American government for a long time already. American soldiers arrived on Greenland back in 1941, when the U.S. hadn't even joined World War II yet. Americans signed an agreement with the Danish that made the Americans in charge of protecting the island. The Germans had occupied the Kingdom of Denmark in the spring of 1940, so it wasn't able to take care of Greenland at the time. This resulted in the Thule Air Base, the most northern U.S. air base. Now when the war ended, the Danish took control of Greenland back, but the Americans didn't leave. In the late 1940s, the countries reviewed and remade an agreement for military bases. Denmark also joined NATO in the late 1940s, becoming one of the first members of the alliance. So Denmark had no problem with building military bases in its territories. Now, in 1960, the Americans began an extremely daring project called Project Iceworm to defend against the Red Threat. They decided to place 600 ICBMs in Greenland secretly and out of sight. According to their idea, the weaponry would be hidden under the ice. Despite the Americans building on the northwest part of the island, 150 miles from the Thule base, a detailed cover story needed to be made. People were told a fairy tale that Greenland would be getting an underwater city where scientists, soldiers, and engineers would live and work together in. Everything began with Camp Century. The project received an infectious advertisement campaign. It was presented as a symbol of American preparedness to build bases not just on the Earth, but on the Moon and Mars as well. Additionally, journalists wrote that life in the camp hardly differed from life in American and Canadian cities. The citizens felt amazing in their isolated, unaccustomed conditions as well. They just calmly worked, didn't fight, and weren't depressed. Of course, not everyone believed these tall tales. Now, some were suspicious that Camp Century was mostly military in nature. And, well, that's because that's what it was. It was made to research the possibilities of building and designing the infrastructure for Project Ice War. The Americans needed to build in harsh climate conditions. Wind speeds could reach 124 miles per hour, and temperatures dropped as low as minus 67 Fahrenheit. There was no comfort, but plenty of snow. Additional difficulties arose because the material and equipment couldn't be delivered by air. The only land-based way to deliver them was huge sleds with tow trucks. The route from Thule Base to the camp took about 70 hours. Swedish snowplows were used to carve the path. They moved up to 1,160 cubic feet of snow per hour and threw it a great distance both sideways and upwards. The main trench, stretching 1,080 feet long, 26 feet wide, and 30 feet deep, was ready first. The tunnels were braced from the inside with steel beams and steel sheets were placed on the roof. Then the tunnel was covered with snow and ice. Wooden barracks were placed inside on pallets to keep the floor and snow separated by an air layer. The same design was done to the walls to keep them from melting. In the end, the Americans made 21 tunnels that totaled 1.9 miles in length. 200 people were sent to live there. The military brought the world's first mobile nuclear reactor, 2 megawatt PM2A, to provide electricity to the camp. That amount of electricity was excessive for the camp, who only ever used at most 30% of the maximum. The USA spent about $60 million on building Camp Century. About 40 million of that went to the reactor. Now in the end, there was a well-developed infrastructure of residences, shops, kitchens, and dining rooms under the snow. There was a hospital with a few operation beds, a research laboratory, a laundromat, a library, and of course, 
bathrooms. Now, Project Iceworm was supposed to begin after Camp Century was completed. The American military engineers intended to create an unbelievable tunnel system stretching 2,500 miles long with over 50 square miles. About three times as large as Denmark. In total, the complex was to house 600 nuclear missiles. Moreover, they would always be in the tunnels. 11,000 soldiers were to serve on the base. Additionally, modified Minutemen missiles capable of reaching the Soviet Union were developed for Project Iceworm. So there was a moment when the Danish government realized that the Americans had gone too far and were on their territory doing something that wasn't quite right. Now the problem was that the US did not initially inform Denmark about the true size of their projects in Greenland. Nevertheless, Denmark couldn't really just drive the Americans off their land. However, Mother Nature had the last word. It became clear that the glaciers were moving much quicker than first thought. The sub-ice base could be destroyed. 120 tons of snow and ice had to be removed every month from the tunnels that stretched 1.9 miles long. Now, if the project had reached the desired 2,480 miles, they would have needed to remove millions of tons of snow monthly. Snow shaving and standing water removal were constant problems. Likewise, the budget cuts for Arctic programs ended up uh, finally ending the project. Now, although the U.S. Army concluded that the sub-ice camps were completed, the nuclear energy could give significant benefits and the obtained experience would have incalculable significance. In 1964, the reactor was dismantled. Project Iceworm was canceled and the Camp Century closed permanently in 1966. Since then, the trenches have collapsed and the remains of the equipment are buried under snow and ice along with the nuclear waste from the reactor. The Americans counted on the glaciers hiding the evidence that couldn't be connected with a purely scientific project, but research held in 2016 showed that the U.S. made a mistake. Part of the Greenland ice shield where the base was could start melting soon. Specialists think that in just a few decades, radioactive water and other waste from the base will start entering the atmosphere and ocean. The equipment and waste storage will surface over time. And of course, the Danish government is uh, pretty concerned about this. Although Greenland doesn't really face any serious danger from the waste, the environment might. Documents about Iceworm were declassified only in the late 1990s. Iceworm is one of those projects whose history only proves that no matter the technology, humanity is not able to defeat nature. Nevertheless, it's interesting to see what kind of insane projects people in the 20th century attempted. We'll probably never even know about other unusual projects like this one. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell me the most interesting thing you learned in the video too. And uh, we'll be back with uh, more interesting videos for you real soon. We'll see you next time.